Hey there, on this episode of the Budget Money Grow podcast, I wanted to talk about saying goodbye and then expound on a a little bit about my personal experience with having to say goodbye and then ask you, are you willing to say goodbye? And the context of what I'm talking about today has to do, of course, with finance. That is my background for over 20 years, doing a lot of different things, including real estate and, you know, mortgage lending and banking and insurance, like a lot of different things that I've been involved in, in the financial space. So I wanted to talk about saying goodbye and how I came to a point where I realized it was super important for my growth to be able to walk away, right? (laughs) To be able to say goodbye to things that were not in alignment with where I wanted to be. And this is something that I found throughout my career as I've counseled people is super hard to do. It is really hard for people to say goodbye to people, things, whatever, that don't align and don't fit with where they're trying to grow. And in my opinion, this ability to say goodbye is the number one reason why people don't grow and why they don't um, achieve because it's tough, especially when you're talking about lifelong relationships and people that have known you your whole life. They knew you when you were, quote unquote, knee high to a grasshopper. They knew you when you were going through that situation. They knew you when you were going through that divorce. They knew you when you were broke, busted and disgusted. They knew you when all of the bad stuff was happening in your life. They knew you when you were really little. And in their mind, they've put you in a box, right? So in their mind, That's who you are. You're those set of circumstances. You're that little kid that they remember. And when you attempt to grow, when you attempt to do something, it doesn't have to be business. It could be, I need to get out of debt, right? When you have a a, a moment where you realize you're having to make choices that you don't want to make because of money. And you say, you know what? I got to do something different. That's a moment of growth. When you have that moment of self-reflection and deciding that the way I've done things has not actually benefited me and I need to figure this out, I need to do something different. And you put your head down and you decide, I'm going to do something different. I'm not going to be a victim of this circumstance. Because a lot of times bad circumstances come in our life and they make us look at ourselves, look at the decisions we've made and make us say, what have I been doing? For the last however many years that have led me to this point of now having to go through something extremely painful. I know everybody's not like that. I'm definitely like that. When I go through moments of pain, when I go through times of extreme distress, I'm always looking inward with myself like, what did you do? Where where did you turn left or right? Like, what left turn did you make? What wrong turn did you make? That led you to this place because I do believe that where we find ourselves isn't the result of one split decision or one moment in time. It's usually a series of decisions. And that was a come to Jesus moment that I had a few years ago where it wasn't that I was broke per se, like in the moment broke. I had savings, but when I really got a financial education, even though I had been in the financial services industry for over 20 years, I did not fully understand the financial system. And I know that I'm not the only one, but when I started a few years ago, going into a deep dive on what our financial system really is and really assessing my life, right? Because regardless of what the financial system is, I was assessing my own life decisions things that I was doing, how I was handling things. And I realized I got to make some changes. And there was a lot of transition happening for me during that time. And it was literally a come to Jesus moment for me. And I said, I got to do something different. 
right? So when I made the decision, what I didn't understand in full, right? When I was making that decision to do something different, when I was making that decision to say, I can't continue to live this way, I got to do something different. When I was making that decision a few years ago, what I didn't fully understand was the impact of a decision, right? Whenever you choose to grow, whenever you choose to make a different choice than what has been the norm, if you decide to no longer be the status quo, right? We live in even more now today. I'm seeing it more and more. It's like a hive mind. Everybody has to think the same, which is impossible. (laughs) It's impossible. But it seemed like there's a narrative that everybody has to think the same. So the minute that you decide, right? And I'm just saying within your your sphere of influence, your circle, the minute that you decide to do something different, to take a step towards growth, towards bettering yourself, right? Whatever that step is, it could be an education, it could be training, it could be getting your finances in order, it could be just getting your life in order. It could be so many directions that this could go in. It's, and so that's why I say it's definitely money related, but it's life related. And and that's what I realized. You know, our finances are usually are a reflection of our life and our choices and our decisions. And so when you make that decision to take that next step, I'm not going to stay where I've been because I've assessed my situation and where I've been is not going to take me where I want to be. Right. If I stay where I am, I'm going to be in some dire straits. Right. When we have that self-assessment and we say, you know what, I'm going to do something different. And literally, and this is this is a bit of an exaggeration, but hell will crawl out of the pit to drag you back in. Right. And what that means for a lot of people is you may have people around you, right? Because there's a saying about who you surround yourself with a lot of times determines your circumstances. And it's not all about money. Again, it's really about mindset. So you have to look at, okay, who am I surrounding myself with and what are we talking about? And when you're deciding that you need to make a change, but the people you're surrounded with are not changing as well, are not open to change, are not thinking about change, are not willing to change, then what it's going to do is cause conflict. And a lot of times what ends up happening is that you, the person making the changes, will end up ruffling some feathers. That's a nice way to put it. You'll end up probably making some people a little mad because their mentality might be well who does she think she is because we're going to go back to the I knew her when she was knee high to a grasshopper I knew her when she was going through that struggle I remember when she had to borrow some money from me all of these things are going to circulate I remember when this that and the third all of these things that were happening that made them feel comfortable with you and you decide no I'm going to do something a little different I'm going to move a little different I'm going to make the shift right? Whatever the shift is, it's going to create some uncomfortability in your circle if they're not also trying to shift with you. And it doesn't mean that everybody's going to attack you. And it doesn't mean that everybody is coming for you. It doesn't mean that, but it does mean that you're going to encounter some things that you're going to have to say goodbye to in order to take that next step. In order to change, things cannot stay the same. So when you having that self-assessment and you're saying, this is not going to work out. Like, I see where this is going. This is going left. If I continue this path, like we all have those moments where we wake up and we say, wait a minute, what is, what am I doing? This is not, I'm not happy. I'm, I'm miserable. You know, these things are going wrong. And then you have to look at yourself and say, well, what, what have I contributed to this situation? Yes, things do randomly happen to people that 
they really maybe didn't have a control over that can happen. But in general, we typically control where our life is going based on decisions that we've made previously. And so again, are you going to be able to say goodbye when you're making that next step and the people around you are like, what are you doing? What would you mean? We can't go out in the this weekend what you mean I can't come over what do you mean we can't do this what do you mean you can't talk right now right because that's what change is change means that it's not going to be what it was if you had a meeting or a, a meetup three times a week and then you assessed your situation and said well I got to cut that out because I don't have time for it or I don't have the finances for it or I have to reallocate this money to be able to do this. People are going to get uncomfortable. Now, for those who are with you that can accept and understand the shift that you're making, thank God for them, right? That's probably not going to be the majority of what you're going to experience. But thank God for the ones that are around you that can say, oh, I understand. I support you. Let me know if I can do anything to help you. Thank God for those people. But you're going to encounter a lot of people who are going to come against that. Right. And the hardest part, this is what my professional experience for 20 years counseling people in the financial world. The hardest thing for people to do in order to grow, especially even in their finances, is to be able to say goodbye. I've counseled hundreds of people who told me stories of the things that are weighing them down and we're looking over their finances and it's not making sense. And then when you start having the conversation, they're telling you about, well, I got this one and I got that one and they, they need me to do this and they need me to do that. And they've just taken on so many other people's burdens without making sure they were in order, right? Not necessarily because these people can't do for themselves, but they've painted themselves into a corner with certain people. So in order for them to pull themselves out of the hole that they found themselves in, they're going to have to make a change. It's going to ruffle some feathers. And most likely, those people are not going to understand why they're making the change they're making. They're going to be angry that they're making the changes that they're making because it's going to require them to change as well. It's going to change up their routine. Things come in our life for seasons, right? People come in our life for seasons. And we have to be willing to say goodbye when that time is up. We have to be willing to say goodbye. And I believe that my personal experience in my own life and my experience counseling others is the reason that we don't grow is because we're not willing to say goodbye. I think about the scripture And I don't have the chapter and verse, but I just remember the first time I read this, I was puzzled. This was a story about Jesus while he was with his disciples. And I was really puzzled. I didn't understand why Jesus said what he said. I was like, that was kind of cold blooded. But as I've grown, I understand it completely now. So Jesus was out with his disciples and the crowd was coming to Jesus because his mother Mary was looking for him. And they were coming and saying, Jesus, your mother wants you. She needs you. And Jesus turned around and was like, who is my mother? (laughs) And I was like, what? What do you mean? Who is your mother, Jesus? You know who your mother is. But I get it. Jesus was on a mission. And Jesus said, these people with me here on the same mission, they are my family. They are my mother. This is what (laughs) Jesus was saying when he said that. That's what he meant. These are the people that are pushing and achieving what it is. I know that I'm destined and I'm supposed to be doing. These are the people that I am, that are my family, that are my close friends or whatever. And so that was the point of that scripture and I get it like I totally understand it but when I first read it probably decades ago I did not understand that I was like I don't I don't get it but 
when you decide to grow, when you decide to move forward and take a step. Like I said, I'm not just making this about getting more money. I'm saying anything that you want to do to grow, to improve your life, to be a better version of yourself, hell will crawl out of the pit to stop that. And you have to be strong enough to say, I'm saying goodbye. You can't have access to me anymore. Now, I'm using strong illustrative words when I say hell will crawl out of the pit and drag you down. But really what this boils down to and what I've learned is it's about boundaries. There are many people who do not have boundaries in their life. They have people in their life who feel like they have unfettered access to do, to say, to have whatever they want. And the minute that you put up boundaries and you say, no, this is how we have to operate. And you create what I'll say, an operating agreement with friends and family, right? Those people will, not all of them, some of them, the ones that you're going to have to say goodbye to are the ones that are going to have an over the top reaction. They're going to act like you did something to offend them because you created boundaries. And those are the ones that quiet is kept. Those are the ones you need to expose themselves because those are the ones that are holding you back. Those are the ones that are stopping your progression, right? Again, I'm not talking about shallow things. I'm not talking about money and, you know, houses. I'm not talking about any of that, right? Those things are byproducts. I'm talking about you making a decision that says, I have to move different. And in order for me to move different, in order for me to make this change that is going to better my life, help me fulfill the mission that I'm called to while I'm on this earth. When you make that decision to make that move forward, when those people expose themselves, because you have to now create different boundaries and operating agreements, and they get offended And they're not happy for you for making a decision to better yourself. They've exposed themselves. You need to be grateful for that. And you need to then say goodbye. Now, sometimes saying goodbye is for a season and sometimes it's forever. Right? You let time and space dictate that. But those people are going to be the ones that are going to stop your growth stop your forward progress. Now, I'm not talking about spousal relationships when I'm saying this, right? I'm, I am married. And so I understand this. Even sometimes when you're moving different, it can affect your spousal relationship, right? Especially if your spouse is not on the same page with you and they are like, yo, what are you doing? Because you're moving different. It's change. So it affects everybody. It affects your children. I've personally gone through that and I've had to have conversations with my kids like, yo, this is what's going on. This is what we're doing now. This is what I'm doing. And y'all gonna have to get on board and support. This is how it's moving. It doesn't mean that I'm not going to be mom. It doesn't mean that I'm not here to support you and I'm not going to do certain things, but you have to understand that we're making some shifts, right? And kids, when you talk to them, but they'll get on board. They'll understand. Now, with, when it comes to your spouse, it's a little different. Sometimes I'm going to say this as a woman that I've had to learn the art of being quiet, right? And learning how to maneuver in a way that it keeps the conflict down. But also, I think about the scripture and again, don't have chapter and verse, but the general sentiment of the scripture is about how a woman can win her husband with her ways. And so I've talked to countless women who had ideas to do things and their spouse wasn't on board, but they decided to find a way peacefully to move forward what they really believed they were supposed to be doing. And then ultimately the spouse would be blown away and would get on board. And this is just an aside. I think that women love being able to be on that one accord with their spouse. And sometimes it doesn't start off that way. Sometimes it starts off a little rocky. And like I said, you have to press forward 
with something you know you're supposed to do. And then the spouse will jump on board later. It might inspire the spouse to not necessarily do a joint venture, but to do his own venture that can inspire him and propel him. So I, I can say for myself, you have to work within the confines with your spouse. So I'm not saying say goodbye to your spouse. That's just not something I personally believe, but you have to figure out how to work within the, the boundaries with your spouse of whatever the changes that are being made. But if you put in the work and you continue to execute and you don't neglect the other things that you have to do, you know, eventually your spouse will understand, they'll see, and they'll be on board with the changes that'll be made. Sometimes you just have to give that a little bit of grace and space and time when it comes to your spouse. But when it comes to other individuals who are not in, in your household, and you'll, you you will know the difference. It won't be like a shock. When you make that change, when you decide, because it starts with the decision, when you decide to make that change and you start creating those boundaries, those new operating agreements with the people that you surround yourself with, those that cannot support or do not plan to support will reveal themselves. And you have to be ready for that. You have to be ready for them to reveal themselves and you have to be willing to say goodbye so that it does not derail where you're supposed to go, what you're supposed to do to better yourself and your family and your future. Because we're not supposed to stay stagnant here. We're supposed to continue to grow, continue to get better. And like I said, this is all across the board. But from a financial standpoint, a lot of times our growth financially get stagnated because we don't know how to recognize people who are working against our best interests. But then finally, we don't understand how powerful it is to say goodbye to those people. And yeah, it's going to hurt. You're going to feel some kind of way about it, especially if you've been around these people your whole life. But you have to be willing to go through that to separate yourself from people who are detrimental to your success. You have to be willing to do that. And again, I'm not speaking from a shallow place. I'm not talking about money and bags and whatever. I'm talking about growth, genuine organic growth. Your next step where you need to go. When you have individuals around you who are not in support of your growth, you have to be willing, you have to be able to say goodbye. Thank you for listening to the Budget Money Grow podcast with Christina. Please check us out at budgetmoneygrow.com for exclusive content. 